Hi, I'm Jim and welcome back. And today we're finally going to start doing some wiring. Now I've done some wiring on the loom already um, for the Cortina, but that's basically separating off the engine loom and tying up a few bits, but that's not to do with the EFI side of it. I wanted to keep the engine and the rest of the body separate, uh, mainly because there's so much more wiring that goes into uh, an ECU or fuel injection build than what actually came off the original engine. So originally you'd have a coolant sensor, oil pressure sensor, and the wiring for the ignition. That's it. There's like three or four wires and essentially this thing runs. In fact, actually less because you don't need the coolant sensor, you don't need the oil pressure. It's just if you want to keep it alive, which would be nice. Um, but to do that, I've had to research a load of stuff, which I'm going to come on to in a bit. But whilst I get everything together, um, I'm going to actually put everything back on and talk a bit about the sensors that I'll be fitting, basically. Uh, we're going to start with the throttle bodies and the exhaust. Uh, they're a pretty big part of it. Christ, they're heavy. So let's get into it. Something's just happened that's really concerned me. So I'm putting these studs in so I can actually mount the throttle bodies properly. And this has happened. So that one sits fine. This one, if you can see it, is, I'd say, two thirds of a hole out. So it doesn't actually sit on the studs. Now, if I bring it over to this one, that sort of aligns there. But you can see here, like it's not f properly aligned. So the manifold or the throttle bodies aren't correct. Um, which is a new one on me. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go back to just mounting it at the bottom for the temporarily. And then when all this comes off to be rebuilt, get the manifold sorted it's probably easier to sort the manifold i think there's not much material here whereas there's a bit more to play with on these so that is a new one on me which i wasn't expecting all right i'll get these put back together this is the inlet air temperature sensor so that's got to go on here. Now I started making this a while ago. This is going to be the back plate to an air box that was going to go obviously here. I was going to duck some cold air into it, try and keep everything as cool as I can. Uh, I've run into some problems. In fact, I'll show you with this plate now. So first problem is wash bottles in the way. So that is a bit of an awkward one. But then I also think that washer bottle is quite close to the exhaust there. Uh, ignore the hose. Um, that, that would be going down there anyway like that. So that's quite close. So I think I may, don't really want to relocate that again, but I might have to. Um, that could always go down to the front here, but that is something for another day. Um, Anyway, airbox. So, I've got to get, I was thinking somewhere around here in the middle because I want something that's representative. I think the only thing I've got to be wary of when I come to put all this together is that it doesn't block the, uh, basically the throttle linkage, but I think that pushes here. I think we'll have enough room to go in the middle. Um, the airbox bit, as you can see, Space is tight. You've got these studs here. Don't forget those um, trumpets that are on there as well. And you can see how tight this is. This is why I've gave up on it. it uh, that was going to sit roughly like that underneath. There'd be another piece on top, um, but that whole box is way too tight. 
like too tight to actually get anything in there. I mean, on plus you'd end up scratching the crap out the inner wings, which is all right at the minute because they need painting. Um, so I think what I'll end up doing for as a start of a turn is using this as a template. Plus I've drilled it really badly. Um, and then when the time comes, I'll switch to a foam filter, like one of those pipe across things. And I can, I can always put some ducting in here that shoots a bit of cold air in, uh, which should make it a bit nicer. Uh, assuming I figure out what I'm gonna do with that windscreen washer bottle. Because when I fitted that, that was before I actually, um, put all this assembly on. I should have checked that properly. But that's not an issue for today. So, let's drill this. Right in the middle. And then we'll figure everything else out as we go. So now we've talked about all that. I've managed to get all this together. I've put the inlet air temperature sensor there. Uh, I don't know whether the throttle linkage will get in the way, but that is a problem for another day. Um, all I need to do now is go get my wiring, or my wires, and get wiring. Fortunately, they all have the same plug. So, um, they've got these plugs, so, common thing but they do go on the injectors and all the other stuff there's only two that are different one for the coil because it's uh four pin uh one for the tps because that'll be three pins and this one which is a funky shape and six pins and that's for the lambda sensor um i'm gonna go get my wires and we'll get cracking So this is what I found originally for uh, the Speed Wino setup, and this has got everything. This is all the options ticked, so you've got stuff for um, various types of um, cam and crank sen sensing. You've got um, stuff for, that's for the uh, idle control valve, so essentially like the choke. Stuff for boost, stuff for variable valve timing, cord on plug. This is all the options you can have. And the problem I found is that there is too much information on this. It's hard to figure out what I needed. Um, so I took that, deleted a load of bits, and this is what I need. So kept it fairly simple. Four injectors, very basic ignition system, the crank sensor. Uh, that's TPS for the throttle. Look at the idle control valve in there, but I've found out I don't need that, which is quite nice. Um, the and then the temp sensors, white band, and the outputs being the fuel pump and um, coolant fan. There's a few uh, diagrams as well that Speedwino give you, which are the specific um, loops, wiring diagrams for. Uh, this is for the in injectors. Uh, oh, sorry, no, sorry. This is the ignition. So this is using the coil that I fitted a couple of months ago. Um, ignoring the firing order because obviously the Cortinas is one two uh, one two four three. Um, but you can set that later on, which I will do. And then the ignition. Sorry. <laughs> Injection, I'm getting it mixed up again. Again, firing order can be will be changed within the ECU, um, but it's going to work in the same way anyway because it's batch fired, which isn't a problem. So I've taken these two diagrams I've shown you and the cut down version, and I have made. Oh, hang on, this. So this is everything on one wiring diagram. So this goes from the back where the fuel pump is. This is under the dash somewhere. 
We've got the original gauges in there as well. The engine itself and all the wiring. Now, because I've drawn this up on CAD, just used a, a basic 2D um, CAD software, which is available. Uh, you can get so many of these, which are normally free. I think ours was. Um, you can't do two colors for the wires. So, for example, the original temp, wi uh, temp gauge wiring is green with a blue line on it. Um, you can't draw that. You can just do a green line or a blue line. But knowing that um, some of these needed two colors, that's why I've got the, the dotted or the um, space lines. Just so I know, you can go over this. So save it as an image and import it into um, something like Microsoft Paint. You can actually draw all these colors on. I have done that in the past. Um, it's just doing it again and again and again. Like You end up making the same drawing about four times if you do it this way. But one cool thing you can do on CAD um, is you can make blocks. So a block could be a single line. It could be this entire end, you know, engine drawing I've done. Or it could be this. So this is the one that I've made for the sensors. So I've got the air temp, water temp, uh, throttle position, and the positions they go to on the ECU. And this makes it so much easier when it's gonna when I get to wiring, which I'm be coming up to in a bit. Um, because now I just have to focus on one tiny aspect rather than the whole thing. So that one's for the sensors and this one's for the injectors. And again, I've got the relay, I've got the um, the wiring coming through. And that's kind of how I've done it because I find breaking it down into little sections, these bite-sized chunks, so much easier because I can just focus on today I'm going to do the ignition. And when I've done that, I can do the injection, and I can do the sensors and whatever. So with that, I need to go order some stuff, and I'll see you in the garage soon enough. So here it is, essentially, uh, the wiring loom. It's going to be a case of just pick up a wire and go for it. Um, fortunately, as I've said earlier, the I've printed all the individual loomed drawings out that's the overall view um so yeah that's kind of it just pick a wire and go for it i think looking at it wiring wise uh there's two options that i can think of um one is we go like the original loom so we build a loom a bit like these and then we have a bulkhead connector so that it breaks away here you just do a disconnect engine could come out technically with the loom still on it i know that's not the case necessarily but that's great it just means you've got complications when you get to the bulkhead or you have one continuous loom it goes through a, a, a big bung probably around here that will be 52 mil in diameter to get everything through it and that will go all the way through to the plug now there's no right or wrong answer on this um, I'm erring towards a breakaway plug So I'm erring towards a breakaway plug. The reason I'm thinking that is not necessarily so I can take the loom out as one. I mean, it'd be nice, but I, how often do you do that? I mean, I get through engines, but not that bad. Um, and it's kind of because if I need to add other stuff in, say in the future, I want to add in a cam sensor or, um, well, basically a cam sensor so that I can change the, ignition wiring to um, sequential rather than batch fire it's a lot easier to integrate that stuff when you haven't got to push a load of wires through yes I've got to unpin it and then rewire those bits but it's a lot easier than having to push all the wiring through I think I think 
I need to think on this a bit more. It depends on how many wires, because I haven't actually worked this out, um, which is a bit dumb on my behalf. So I think I'll leave. So I'll take, like this is the one of the ignition coil wires. I'll just pin it at one end, leave the full length on, work out how many wires I've got to get through, because I've also got the engine wires to get back on this. Um, and then look at what my options are for plugs, for everything else, and for space. It seems like the smartest idea, um, and it gives me a couple of days to then think about it. But whilst I think about it, I'm not actually doing it, so let's just start pinning stuff and hope for the best. Montage. feels like a lifetime of just pinning plugs. I've got the loom roughly how I want it. Um, it's all pinned, all connected. I've even put some tape on in a few places just to try and see where the loom's gonna sit. I think I'd like to um, support this better, obviously it's just rested there, but that's fine. And I've got that big bundle to sort out. Now that everything's wired up on the engine side, feel really confident to continue with the ECU, which we'll do quite a bit of in the next episode. This is the Speed Reno 0.4.4D, which is a really good catchy name for something like this. Um, I'm gonna get that side of it set up. I'm waiting on a few parts for it. I've decided to go through the bulkhead uh, with a block connector, which is coming, I think, tomorrow. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, but it was a lot to put into one episode. It's quite dense. So I'd say if you're going to do something like this, start off with that drawing that I did um, from Speedwino, take off everything you don't want, and then start assigning colors and whatever else. Just use paint. I mean, that's what I've, I've done, um, really. I know I did the CAD side of it, but I have also done um, some colored ones so I could see what two colored wires went where. And it's really helped me. Um, it'll help me a lot more when I get, get to the plug side of it and have to start looking at whether I need to uh, twist some of the cables together. So we'll be doing a bit of that. Um, but I'm feeling really confident so far. It's taken me a long time, longer than I expected, which generally tends to be the trend with everything I'm doing at the minute because um, it's not been done before uh, from my point of view. So I'm trying to learn as much as I can and then put it into practice and try and do it right first time. I'm going to make mistakes. Probably have. Just haven't found them yet. But it's going well. And hopefully I'll have something soon. Um, won't be next weekend because I'm in Budapest to watch the F1, which I'm so excited about. And um, hopefully I'll have something to show you in the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't already, please like, you know, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and get in touch because I really appreciate that. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.